Margaret Sullivan was a fighter, and despite coming from wealth, she struggled for everything she had. Her parents abandoned her, but she didn't care. The actress lived on her terms, but in the end she got tired, and life dealt with her. Right before her eyes, everything she built went to ashes. This is the sad life of Margaret Sullivan. Love is a messy affair. To love is to be prepared to do the absurd, and in her relationships the fantastic actress did the absurd. Interestingly, most of the wild things she did were for a man she wasn't married to. It was for a man she referred to as her friend, but with whom she may have had affairs, as their closeness and chemistry were on a level many couples would love to have. Jimmy Stewart and Margaret Sullivan were friends, and they met in the early parts of her career, when she was just beginning as a stage actress. They would go on to have a friendship that spanned a lifetime, even if that life wasn't the longest or the healthiest. Sullivan was the most un-Hollywood Hollywood star with her temperament, or maybe she was just the typical diva. The actress was a feisty spirit and an independent woman to the core. She didn't like people telling her what to do, and sometimes she could rush head along into dangerous situations, which is interesting considering the care she put into her career. Margaret openly defied and disrespected the studio system. She resisted the games the movers of the system played and got away with it. She was far too valuable for them to do anything against her. The studio executives, with reputation for being tough and mean, couldn't control her, and the same went for the husbands that she married. The one husband that tried to embarrass her had a taste of his own medicine, and it was a bitter pill for him to swallow. Henry Fonda would regret the day he attempted to lord himself over Margaret when they were married to each other. She married Henry Fonda at the start of her stage career, and the marriage was anything but blissful. It wasn't that they didn't try to make it work. The two travelled to New York together to be together as they looked for work. However, their romance had all the signs of being brief. They were just too different from each other. Fonda was an emotionally closed-off man. He couldn't express himself if his life depended on it. On the other hand, Margaret was on the excessive side of expressing herself. Nothing got past her. She would talk or react if she saw what she didn't like. So the two of them had this fight. It was an odd thing, considering that the matter was a simple one. Fonda asked his wife to pitch in for fireworks, but Margaret refused. Rather than talk to his wife and express how he felt about her refusal, Fonda began complaining to another actor right before her. She listened, and when she had had enough of Fonda's rant, she got a jug of cold water and emptied it on Henry's head. After embarrassing Fonda publicly, she had no regrets and didn't care to apologise. She settled into the table she sat in before deciding to wet Fonda and continued her food. No wonder the two of them only spent fifteen months together. Their relationship had always been a time bomb, but maybe Margaret's friend and Henry's best friend made it explode faster. According to Brooke, Margaret's daughter, her mother had an affair with Stuart while she was married to Fonda. The daughter revealed that the two decided to remain friends, as they thought being in a relationship could ruin their friendship. Margaret was on to something with the decision not to pursue a relationship with Jimmy, especially as he had a playboy reputation, despite his dorky personality. But still, what they shared was beyond intimate. Want to find out the true extent of Jimmy and Margaret's romance? Stick with us and find out. Margaret Sullivan had a background and childhood that was opposite of what she became. Her birth was a mixture of good and bad news. She was born in 1909 in Norfolk, Virginia, to wealthy parents. Her father was a big-shot stockbroker. The actress was born frail and had a muscular leg problem that didn't let her walk. It was something her luxurious life and her parents' wealth couldn't cure. This condition planted the seeds of what would turn out to be a messy life. You see, Margaret was alone because of that problem. In her early childhood, she couldn't play like the other children and always had to be inside. Thankfully, her condition became better when she was six years old, but she had lost valuable playing time. Now fully recovered, young Sullivan was ready to have all the years' worth of fun she missed. Margaret developed an extreme taste for fun which annoyed her parents. While they wanted their daughter to act her station as the daughter of wealthy parents, Margaret just wanted to play. 
She became a tomboy and had many male friends whose parents weren't rich. Margaret loved horsing around with these boys, and she did so without letting it affect her education. She was the tomboy with an ambition, even though her ambition would bring her to odds with her parents. She was respected in her school, Chatham Episcopal Institute, and eventually became the student body president. With her academic quality and her background, her parents thought that their daughter's ambition was the same as theirs. They believed she was going to take up a regular career. It shattered their hearts when their sweet daughter announced she wanted to be a theatre actress and skipped town to Boston to study drama and dancing. Oh, her parents fought back. They reduced her sizable monthly allowance, confident their daughter would come home but they didn't know just as their daughter could rough it with the boys at Norfolk. She could rough it in life. Margaret told them that she didn't need their money. She wasn't just a smart cookie, but a tough cookie. To fund her ambition, the actress got a job as a clerk at the bookstore. It was tough, but it was what she chose. Thankfully, it chose her too, and she went to Harvard. The strong-willed actress got a small part in Close Up, a theatre production by the highly regarded Harvard Dramatic Society. She completely dominated the part, and the way she slapped her future husband, Henry Fonda, as the script required, was epic. Margaret was a passionate actress, and the emotion she infused into her character was so real that the audience resonated with her. Strangely, Henry began to fall for her, and ironically, he liked her because of how expressive she was but he wasn't the only one. His best buddy, Jimmy Stewart, had a big crush on her too. After the close-up production, Harvard accepted Margaret and Henry into their university players' troupe for the 1929 summer season. There they met Stewart, and the three of them began best friends tied together by a mutual love for one another. Before Henry could even make a move, shy Jimmy Stewart did, but as much as Margaret thought Jimmy asking her out was the the longest, slowest, shyest, but most sincere proposal she had ever gotten, she turned him down. She didn't let his sweet, innocent face fool her. The man was a player, and she didn't want her heart to be broken. Instead, she went for the more stoic fonder. He asked her out, they dated, married, and had one of the most mutually destructive marriages Hollywood had ever seen. They divorced each other, and it seemed that it was time for Jimmy to make a move on her. He didn't although allegedly the two had already sneaked around behind Fonda's back. The actress didn't give Jimmy time to react as she went to marry William Wyler, a big-shot movie director. Even Jimmy, no matter how much he must have cared about Margaret, would not be interested in a relationship with her at that time. His life was in a shambles. Jimmy almost quit acting when nothing was working for him. His buddy Henry was high-flying, but he was there, barely getting by. He got a breakthrough when MGM signed him on a standard seven-year contract, but he was so far below the pecking order that he was practically invisible. On the other hand, Universal managed to sign Margaret, and she became a star in every sense of the word with her breakout film, Only Yesterday, which was a financial and critical hit. To show her talent wasn't just a fluke, the films The Good Fairy and So the Red Rose that followed her first film were even better. Sullivan wasn't happy about what was happening to Jimmy. She showed so much determination about getting Jimmy Stewart to star alongside her that her newest husband, Wyler, was suspicious. But things haven't got crazy yet. Jimmy and Sullivan starred in four films together. Their first film, Next Time We Love, absolutely ruined Margaret's life. Margaret had power due to her being a bankable name. She hadn't failed at the box office, and Universal's execs didn't want to offend her. They already knew they couldn't control her, as she had defied them multiple times. So they let her be, and tolerated her. When she insisted on bringing an unknown name and a completely green Jimmy Stewart over to star as her leading man, they allowed her. No one wanted to be Margaret's new victim. After all, she killed a man who didn't let her have her way. The unfortunate man was Sam Wood, a film director. Sam wanted to sack a scriptwriter, and the actress was having none of it. Her legendary temper flared, and she got into an intense argument with Wood. It was a gory sight, and during the argument, Sam had a heart attack and died on the spot. Jimmy was an MGM star then, but Universal went out of its way to get him. 
When filming began, it became apparent that Jimmy wasn't the man for the job. He wasn't experienced, and it looked like Margaret was wrong. The director complained to Margaret, but she wasn't ready to kick out her friend. So she began to spend more time with him, training and grooming him. She helped him eliminate his speech pattern and helped him find his voice. The coaching was intense, and sometimes it would reach into the dead of the night. Don't forget, the actress had a husband, but he became secondary to her goal of making Jimmy ripe for the role. William Wyler, Sullivan's husband, was getting angry. Rumours were flying in his ear, and even if he wanted to ignore those rumours, his wife's chemistry with Jimmy on screen couldn't be ignored. It looked too real, and it was like that for all of their films. It was so authentic that even Hard Heart Louis B. Mayer, MGM's top dog when he watched of the films the two starred in together, The Shop-Worn Angel, said, Why, they're red hot when they get in front of the camera. Their co-star for the film, Walter Pigeon, said he felt odd, like he was interrupting something. Now imagine how the man that married Sullivan would feel. You guessed right. He couldn't take it. He divorced the actress within 16 months of their marriage, and Sullivan, who feared being alone due to her childhood, broke down. It was the first of many mental breakdowns that would eventually consume her. Margaret couldn't bear the thought of being alone, and now that she didn't have a man, you would think she would go for Jimmy, but she didn't. Instead, just months after her divorce, she hooked up with and married her agent, Leland Hayward. If you thought her life was messy, well, things were about to get messier. Hayward didn't play nice. The marriage began well. The couple had three children together, and for a minute it looked like Margaret finally had everything she needed. It seemed like the third time was the charm for her. Margaret had left the chaos that came with Hollywood in pursuit of her peace. Then Hayward showed his colours. He cheated on her ruthlessly with Slim Keith, a socialite. Sullivan felt betrayed and couldn't bear the sight of her husband. She promptly divorced him, and the two got shared custody of the children. This was where everything went up in flames. Margaret was a disciplined mum, but Hayward wasn't playing fair. Any time the kids went to his place, he showered them with so much luxury that two of Margaret's children, Bridget and Bill, were tired of living with her. They told her that they preferred staying with their father and not her. It crushed Margaret's already fragile mind. She fumbled around and begged them to stay with her and not leave her. It was her early childhood all over again. Her two children wouldn't listen to her. She had married another husband after leaving Hayward, but it didn't make the impending loss any easier. She cried overnight when her children told her they had made up their minds, and it was so bad that Brooke, her first daughter, had to cover her ears to drown out the noise. Her crying looked to be the good part. At some point, she didn't get out of the house. She would crawl under her bed and curl into the fetal position for hours. Finally, one of her friends got her out, but Sullivan was far gone. The fiery actress had become replaced by a shadow of herself. To rescue Margaret, she agreed to stay in an asylum for more than two months. Finally, the actress had some excellent news. She was getting better. But then a childhood disease struck her. She had a defect when she was born, and it slowly cost her her hearing. Losing her hearing returned the actress to the dark days of mental breakdowns. Not hearing meant that her career as a theatre actress was over. She had lost two of her three kids and left Hollywood. The stage was what she had left, and she was about to lose that one too. The actress fell into the abyss of her depression. She couldn't sleep and would walk around at night. When she finally could sleep, she wouldn't be able to get out of her bed. The energetic actress didn't have any strength for anything. She would even beg people to leave her alone. Her condition worsened, and the actress had to rely on sleeping pills. After suffering and struggling to survive on New Year 1960, her aides found her barely breathing and unconscious. They rushed her to the hospital but she died on the way. It turned out that the actress had overdosed on sleeping pills. Some say that the actress intentionally harmed herself, and others say it was an accident. We guess we'll never know. But we do know that even in death the actress's suffering continued. The two children that left her took their own lives. One did with a bullet to the head, 
and the other by overdosing on sleeping pills. Her life was tragic both when she was alive and after she passed. Now we invite you to stick around for the next chapter of Hollywood's scandalous history. Discover the shocking twist that rocked Elizabeth Montgomery's world and left audiences reeling.